everybody. It is Demetra K. I'm sitting here with Don Venthron Rocks, and he is hiding his hands. Yes. Deep. This is the second um, hour of To the Hard Way, where we are going to discuss some things uh, not unusual from the things that we discuss um, ordinarily. But the topic of today's show is white people weaponizing, weaponizing, I don't even know if that's technically a word, but weaponizing the police against blacks. Now, how do I come to this topic? Over the last couple of weeks, and I'm just trying to you know, think of recent things, we have seen the police uh, being used as weapons against black people. Now, what do I mean by weaponizing? To weaponize means to make something an object in order to manipulate, to get your way, um, and usually it's to harm, to cause harm to something or someone. All right, and so um, everybody knows what's going on with Starbucks. We know that in two separate cases with Starbucks, uh, the police were called by employees on black people. The first one was because uh, apparently they weren't buying anything. They were sitting And so uh, the employee or the barista asked them to leave and they were trying to explain to her that we're waiting for a colleague because we're, you know, discussing real estate. I guess that didn't matter. Called the police on the two brothers Mm -hmm. and the brothers were arrested and taken to jail. They didn't go to jail because they were fighting or doing something dangerous or harmful. They went to jail because they simply um, were not buying anything. And, And some people will say they were loitering. Or they were vagrants. That's a term that's often used, you know, when it comes to black people. All right. The other case was, as we saw, uh, the Waffle House. And I'm not talking about the uh, mass murder that took place in the Waffle House. I'm talking about the incident that happened with uh, Miss Clemens. I can't remember her first name. But anyway, she was disputing uh, a charge that was on her bill uh, regarding uh, plastic silverware. Mm-hmm. And then you'll go ahead and show the video mm-hmm. of that. Okay. And so... Um, she's disputing the plastic silverware charge on her bill. And she's saying, you know what? The last time I was here, I didn't have to pay that charge. And so if you would, could you take it off of my bill? And so I guess the manager or whoever was like, no, we're not taking it off. And she asked for the number to corporate. She said as she's waiting, she thought that it was taking so long for them to come back because they were going to bring her the number to corporate. Well, to her surprise, the police shows up Mm -hmm. and I guess, you know, from what we saw of the video, he's grabbing onto her, My show. Mm-hmm. trying to arrest her. And she's like, wait a second. I was just wanting a number to corporate. What's going on here? And from that point, two police officers takes this girl or this lady down to the ground, wrestling her down to not not arresting her, wrestling her down to the ground to where her top comes off. And her breasts are fully exposed. Yes, what a shame. In addition, he's telling her, if you don't stop. Now, listen, I'm not to me, it wasn't even a resisting arrest. It was a resisting sexual abuse and harassment because I could imagine being in her situation and my top is down. Hell yeah, I'm going to be resisting because for one, I'm trying to pull up my shirt so you don't see my breasts. Mm -hmm. So... He's telling her, if you don't stop, I'm going to break your arm. Now, did he tell her what she was being arrested no. for? No. He said that you were dropping a lot of F-bombs. Is it, is it a crime? or No, to, that's to not curse? a crime. Um, when, when you're being, uh, uh, first, thing, when, first thing you should do when you're uh, dealing with a cop is ask them what their name is and their badge number. Uh, but they cannot arrest you uh, without telling you what you're okay, being arrested for. Okay, we know that. Mm-hmm. But they, they don't know that. Okay. They know that and don't care. And so... Okay. As I was saying, this woman is, uh, they're not even trying to help her pull her shirt up. They, I was, I was, I've, I've been angry before, but I've never been so angry seeing that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the police was using that case, you know, to put her under subjection for whatever reason. She's disputing the, the silverware charge. All right. We also saw, and this is coming um, to the forefront too, four professional black women were golfing as they do all the time. Mm-hmm. They were golfing. And white men, which happens, one of them, I guess, was the owner, calls the police on these women. You want to know why? They were golfing. You, do you think maybe because they murdered somebody? No, they were golfing. They, maybe they, you know, tore up the, the, the green. Well, you know why? Why? Because they were golfing too slow. Okay, well, um, I'm going to have to uh, defend uh, my white brethren 
<laughs> before you stab me. It would listen to me because the only greens black women should be on you is the ones that they're cooking. Shut your ass up. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. No, but they, they, yeah, were, they, were, they were golfing too slow. Too slow. And so this What's was too slow the, in I, golf? Well, they, they were saying, I guess it took them 20 minutes or so. It, but that doesn't matter because, you know, golf shouldn't even be called. I mean, if it wasn't called golf, it'd be called walking. Well, right. But she said they golfed there plenty of times before. Mm-hmm. And so as she's talking to the guy, he, she says, well, who are you? He says, I'm the owner. So he's there with his other white buddies. And he's trying to, he's fumbling is what he did. But you know what he did? He made the mistake of effing with the wrong women. Mm-hmm. This woman that he was talking to. Um, is a lawyer in addition to being the president of the one of the chapters in New York of the NAACP. That don't mean nothing. I'm the, I know it don't, but the point that I'm making is he thought he was messing with some right. old... Off the street, know, yeah. But that's what white privilege allows you to do, that I'm going to just roll up on these women and mm-hmm. tell them, you, you know, and it not, listen, you the owner, could you find another way to maybe kick me off of your golf course besides right. calling the police? Mm-hmm. Right. And so... The question I have is here, and all these cases, and we know there's millions of more incidents. Whatever happened to uh, conflict management uh, with uh, customer service? Do, no. why, why does it need to be the go-to for me to call the police on you for some silverware? Why do I need to call the police on you because you're asking to use the bathroom? Like the one at Starbucks mm-hmm. in Los Angeles, the guy asked to use the, uh, the code for the bathroom. She told him no. Yeah. When the white guy came out and said, well, I didn't have to buy nothing. Uh, well, Why don't you call the police on me? Well, D, look. Now, first of all, sister, you're getting a little loud. You're like, going to get loud. Y'all get upset for no oh, reason. Y'all, you, you know I yeah. upset. But, you know, y'all be getting loud and just put... These are all coincidences. Is it? It's all coincidences. It, okay. All right. Well, well, we'll just go along with that. So let's go on back and do just a little history here. Let's go on to history. Do a little history lesson. All right. So roughly around 1830s is when we saw the inception of the police. So a lot of people aren't familiar with why the police is even here. Police, uh, uh, let, let me take a guess. Go ahead, because you go ahead. Go Slavery. ahead, history major. Yes. Slavery. Yes. We're runaway slaves. That that was the inception the of the patrol. police. Yes. The, the slave, slave patrol, patrol mm-hmm. was to uh, get runaway slaves and to stop slaves from running away right. and being wayward. And wait, wait. Where did I learn that? I didn't learn that in school. In a regular class, I had to take black history. But yeah. You have, to, you have to dig deep. I had to you take know. black history. So that. th- um, that's where the police... Uh, has come from. Mm -hmm. So this was 1830s, all right? And it was also, like I said, to keep the slaves in fear, Mm -hmm. right? Now, after the Civil War, during Reconstruction, what came into prominence? The KKK. The KKK, right. Right? And so they were... The first terrorist organization. There was no such thing as a terrorist organization. Right. But their job was to uh, terrorize freed slaves, or freedmen, as you would Mm -hmm. call them, to terrorize them and to keep them subjugated. That was their job. So don't you think that a lot of those uh, slave patrols ended up here in the Klan? Has somebody got a question for me? Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, oh the kids are getting to kids scroll. Okay, Cynthia, we'll see you next time. Okay, so uh, don't you And think- Cynthia is a really big political person. She okay. was always in the school, so she's going to be debating you. All about, right. So what you're saying. Okay, cool. All right, so, <laughs> at, so during the Civil War, we got the Klan. Uh, don't you think a lot of those slave patrols, uh, uh, the what they call them, the Patty, uh, mm-hmm. whatever they call them, don't you think a lot of them transitioned to the Klan? Because the Klan's purpose was to F with black people. Well, actually, in 1920, when the Klan was at its most prominence, and, and you know this mm-hmm. as well, uh, even to be on the police force, you better be, be a member of the Klan. Right. Okay. So that brings me down to my next point. Okay. Klan members... Um, as a lot of people think, Klan members were just, you know, duh, 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 duh. I'm sleeping with my cousin and my sister. They're thinking of those people, okay. but they're not. The, the members actually were clergy, lawyers, judges, police mm-hmm. officers, city councils, senators. These were very astute people, people. In, in society doing their damnedest to mess with black people. Okay. We know the things that black people were taking through during, uh, by the hands of the Klan, mm-hmm. uh, lynchings and all kind of stuff. Yeah, I saw that picture you posted. I put, I put a picture up. Very, very graphic. It's, it's very graphic, but that is America's, not American, however you want to say it, but that's America's yeah, here's a picture. history. Mm-hmm. That is America's history. And it was also said, which is, you don't even need to say this, but lynchings, 
were a family affair. Mm -hmm. In that picture, what do you see? You see people from all ages, Mm -hmm. children, old people, young people, and they are happy to be there. When they found out they were lynching a black person in that picture, there were two Mm -hmm. teenagers. Right. Two teenagers accused of something more than likely they didn't do. Mm-hmm. They said in uh, during the height of lynchings, lynchings took place every four days. Yes. Um, uh, a quick disclaimer. Mm-hmm. If you're ever in Oklahoma or someplace, or let's just say a, a, a country and western bar, and you hear a, a white guy go, yeah, and you are not white, you better leave it's the time establishment. To get your ass it's time there. to get out of the establishment. Okay. All right. And so... We've, we've covered the members, so we're going to move it on down to present day. Well, close to present day. So okay. there was a case um, in Los Angeles in 1991. The L.A. Sheriff's Department uh, got in trouble or was discovered that a portion of the L.A. Uh, sheriffs were um, they were running a neo-Nazi organization out of yes, their, their that. department mm-hmm. that was designed to terrorize black and brown people. Okay. And were found to have executed absolutely. Some of them. Mm-hmm. So, 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 for those of y'all who might say, "Oh, well, you know, you're just making stuff up," exaggerating. Do your research, yeah. okay? And this is 1991, okay? okay? All right. What else we got here? And I'm I'm coming to a close. In Chicago, uh, police department a, det- a detective rather was rumored to be KKK, and he called the device they had it was an electronic shock device. He called mm-hmm. it the quote unquote nigger box, where mm-hmm. they would use it to shock black people Mm -hmm. okay that's what he called it the nigger box not my words his words yeah all right so now we have in 2018 the police kkk you can use the terms uh interchangeably they're most of the same now are there good police officers on the force no that's debatable no there aren't Uh, but i would like to i like when people tell me well there's good police officers no they're not I, i would say yes but there's not enough of them to change no. the behaviors of the battle. No, no, they're not. Because, and I'm going to disagree with you right okay. there. With force, Ooh. you cannot be a good police officer when you are. Uh, your job is to pr- protect and serve. You've got police officers that will not cross that blue line because they're worried about their job. Oh, they're worried absolutely. about their payment, whatever deal is. Now, those. Majority good police officers, because they won't do their duty because they're, you know, they're supposed to protect us. Right. And they know murders and things are happening. That makes them just as bad oh, no, I as the other one. It, it, it's no different than if we, uh, I'm sitting in the car and you go rob a liquor store and somebody gets killed. We are all responsible. I had nothing to do with it. Right. So if, this, if that rule applies to us as civilians, it applies to them as police officers. Oh, no, I agree. But so I'm there's saying, no such thing and, as a and good maybe I'm saying in the in the in the instance of good meaning that you're not doing anything bad, like you're not wrestling black women down to the ground while they're right now. Are showing. But 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 that doesn't to me that still doesn't make you no, good. I agree. You, you're, I, I agree. I I, 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 I you're, give you're you that one. Good. One yeah. point for you. Okay, Ding. and this that's only one. Yeah, it's only one. In all the years we've done this, you've right. only got one. Look at Al. Uh, Al Jackson says, I personally believe on the Flintstone Hanna-Barbera, uh, Hanna-Barbera were being, were, were being racist. The Buffalo Lodge was an undercover KKK club. Fred and Barney were members of it. Now look, now, now look, you're coming on my show now, so I don't want to, <laughs> I agree with you, Al. I happen to agree with that, so. That's your man. So, uh, okay. continue. <laughs> so, here we are. In 2018, Mm -hmm. where white people, Mm -hmm. not all, but some. Well, I'm Indian. Yeah, I got 10% Indian in me, so I'm not white. Are taking the opportunity Mm -hmm. to call the police on black people. Mm -hmm. Any chance they get. Any chance they get. What happened to, like I said, conflict management skills? That went out the, win- that went out the window. You know, uh, using your customer service. I mean, we've all done customer service to some degree, and they have taught us, even on a very bare minimum, of how to deal with people who are not favorable to the establishment. Right? I've never once, that I can remember, been told, call the police immediately. Right. The minute of black, and this is what it is, though. They're black. I'm white. They're disagreeing with me. Instead of me even going through the conflict management and trying to, you know, come to a happy medium here, I'm going to. Okay. Yes, we have some um, 
with some people here and mm-hmm. they're not listening. And I'm sure the 911 calls got to be a little bit more than, well, you know, she's just mad over the silver charge. Right. She's just sitting here. She's, she's supposed to be waiting for corporate. I'm sure she's in here cursing and she's doing this and we're scared for our lives. And I'm sure all of that. I'll be interested in hearing the tape. Well, back in 63, when I went across that bridge with Dr. Martin Luther King and, uh, you know, things are going to change. Y'all niggas just keep standing there and just take it. That good white man. One day, one day, brothers and sisters, we're going to be free. And guess who's going to free us? That good old white man. Yes, yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These are the people ah. that are telling us this stuff. Don't I, swing, I, sing. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I cannot agree with you <laughs> anymore. I wish I wish I could. But I mean, no, I, no, I, I definitely agree with you on that. And so... We are living in a time where, as I said, again, it's not that it ever a time ever went away. Right. But it's becoming more and more prevalent to just call the police on sure. those niggers. And now this is the part, the other part, okay? Mm-hmm. The other part is this. Once the police gets there, and this is how you know they're all in cahoots, that the police, there's a lot of KKKism going on in there. Because once they get there, why don't they say, um, uh, Miss Starbucks Barista? Mm-hmm. Why did you call us? Mm-hmm. He just wanted to use the bathroom. Just tell him no. Mm-hmm. You know? Why, well, do I need, why do I need to? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Well, policy says when they get a call, they have to go check it out. But that's, the, that's okay, the policy. But if I, ma'am, she, she's disputing that this is a, is this really a, a civil thing. If you right. really think about but, it, she's disputing um, a, a silverware charge. Right. But you got to also remember, too, because we are uh, there, we are so proportionately on the wrong side of the law in a lot of people's eyes um, when a cop comes out, automatically your yeah. ass is guilty. Yeah, we're we're right? guilty. But the thing is, you know, white people seem to think that well, you know, most of the we're going to run or we're going to you know we're, we're going to do something. It was said that the guy that called the police on Stephon Clark mm-hmm. said that incident stopped him from calling nine one one ever again. Because mm. I don't know, you know, if it was his intentions. That right. he, maybe he legitimately thought somebody was breaking into yeah. cars or whatever. But he said that he will never, ever call 911 mm-hmm. ever again. Right. Can you imagine having to live with the fact that you, you cost somebody life. their very life? Yeah, from a phone call. You know, he's probably thinking the police are going to go check it out and see what he's doing. Hey, buddy, what are you doing over here? Mm-hmm. You never in a million years thought that they were going to load, was it 30, 20? 20, 20, 20, 20 shots, uh, eight, eight of hit. them, eight hit. Right. Six of them in the back. But so, you know, my thing is, why do you why do you need to call the police? I mean, to me, that is so especially when we live in a climate where, you know, the police Well, the police has never been for black people. I just want sure. to get that out the way. I know somebody already said, well, there's a lot of good police officers tonight. Well, I got remember. No I got such stopped. thing as a good police Don't officer. You hate this? When somebody, especially somebody black says, well, I got pulled over by a police once and they were very nice to me. Sure. Were they nice to you or was they supposed? I mean, they're just. That's their job. They're not. They're not supposed to come to the car with the gun drawn and blow right. your head off. Right. That's. They're not supposed to do that. And unfortunately, they're supposed to be civil to you. And unfortunately, you got a lot of people that are joining the police force with the uh, wrong intention. They want the power because they got the badge. They think they got. They get special powers because they've got a badge. Um, I've always said it, and I will say it to the day I die. Should you not have at least an associate degree to be on a police force? Well, I, I, this is where I, I'm going to have to probably mm-hmm. take your point back. Okay. Take, because take all back. the people I just listed, whether you were um, a lawyer, a judge, mm-hmm. you know, some city council people. All oh, I'm yeah, saying, no. They mm-hmm. all have degrees. Right. Most of, some of them have doctors. Right. But, 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 but what I'm saying is at the level of knowing what to do and how to do it, I think, to, and for the amount of money that we give them, yeah. you should have. And I, 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 yeah, you should have some, I, I agree, you should yeah. have some training, yeah. more something else. But if you are a racist that's bloodthirsty for black people, ain't no degree on this planet sure. going to change your mind. Absolutely. None. Absolutely. But again, I will debate anybody that says there's such thing as a good cop. There's no such thing as a good cop. I'm sorry. In my opinion, as long as they, they stay on that side of the blue line. Number one, I think that uh, we, we uh, the training curriculum for the cops is trained wrong because what is it? Why are you a cop if you're in fear of your life when, when dealing with the public? I'm going to tell you all a story as far as, you know, uh, police goes. My father, um, who I deem to be a very good dude, and he would lay down his life for just about anybody. Mm-hmm. He was um, driving down the street one day 
and he saw a white man in his yard wedding up two sisters. When I say sisters, for they all that's black women. Okay. Wedding up two sisters as they're walking by his house with his water hose. And so my father gets out and told him to stop. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. The white man runs in his house and grabs a machete, swinging it at my father and the two women. Now, this wasn't even that long ago. Right. My father calls the police. He said, do you know that sheriff came out there and put me under interrogation? Of course he did. And that man got off? Of course he did. White privilege. Exactly. But can you imagine if that had been my dad swinging a machete mm-hmm. and wetting up two white women? Bat, bat, bat. Without yeah. a question. And then all he's got to do is say, I feared for my life because right. he had a machete. So the point that I'm bringing up is, as a black person, you call the police on a white person... Nine and a half times out of ten, that's probably not going to go anywhere unless you probably have extreme... Well, let proof. me ask you this, since we're on the Waffle House thing, and we're going to see the video. Let me show you the video first before I get into my point. This is the video of the uh, Waffle House shooter. Uh-huh. Okay, they finally took him into custody yesterday, and once again... After he been on the run for a while. Right. Now, once again, another white shooter that was taken into custody... But yet a black man could be in his back grandmother's backyard and he's dead or a black suspect. The black suspects seem to end up dead. But here is an armed white man, which the police should have been in fear for, for their life because this guy just took four lives. Well, he took four black lives. too. Well, yeah, whatever deal is. But the, the premise is the same. You should automatically assume that this guy is armed and dangerous because innately, and he was taken into custody. Innately. A lot of white people, we can argue if y'all want to, mm-hmm. are taught and feel that black people are bad. Yes. But if you're presented with one of your own, I don't care if you just shot four black people, mm-hmm. you know, we'll catch him. Right. He's probably not. He's going to be harmless. But see, and, and then again, I also blame that on us uh, ourselves by not policing ourselves like we used to do. Mm-hmm. If I did something and your mom would tell, tell me to do something, I not only did your mom just knock me in my head, my, I get home, my mom and dad are going to knock me in but, my head. And then, too, you made a good point mm-hmm. that we do need to police our own. As mm-hmm. far as have our own uh, black police officer in our neighborhood. But the problem with that is a lot of our black men are being charged with felon or felonies, right, felonies, all kind of stuff. And so that disqualifies you from doing that kind sure, of stuff. Sure. Um, I want everybody to take take a look at this. This, this was a movie back in 1996, I believe. It's called Higher Learning with oh. Omar Epps and uh, Michael Rappaport. And this is very significant because this has been going on for years. This is nothing new. This is the scene to where uh, they've got the shooter cornered. They know that this guy is a shooter. And um, they're beating up Mike Epps. Or not Mike Epps, uh, Omar Epps, mm-hmm. and they're talking to the shooter. So let's take a look at this scene and tell us what you think. And that's my point right that's there. That's typical, though. Typical. That's typical. 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 Um, Al Jackson says, it's so ridiculous on why people are so racist. I was pulled over by a white racist cop for fa- for failing to yield. He said, did you see the arrow? I said, no, I didn't even see the Indian. <laughs> now, a disclaimer, that is her man. That is her man. But uh, good point. <laughs> good point. <laughs> I think you got a stalker. I'm so glad that you find police brutality funny. Yes, it is. Well, you know, hey, you got. If you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. Okay. You're gonna cry. But <laughs> but 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 in that clip that just happened, this is the this is what makes especially me upset and other people like me upset. Maybe why D's upset because it seems there's a double standard to how they go about apprehending suspects we end up dead they end up alive well you know what I, i'm not even I, okay i'm upset but i'm not upset mm-hmm. with the police or the kkk mm-hmm. or any white person who thinks that this is okay because let's not be confused a lot of white people don't have a problem with this at all right okay? right i'm upset with us because we keep lamenting about it okay instead of doing something about, about it. it we keep saying what can we do D? Well, first of all, as we always talk about, we need to start practicing group economic and self-love. Without those two things, we're not ever, ever, ever going to make it. We keep asking people to care about us who never cared about us past the, us being yeah. a product. Right. Okay, they never cared about us. And why would they start? We are, if you, I mean, you're just like, if you close your eyes and somebody told you about the things that were going on today... You will probably think that you're in 1818, mm-hmm. 1918. 
Never in a million years would you think that you're in 2018 where you can watch. Now that makes me mad. You can watch a black woman being wrestled down to the ground by two white police officers and they don't have a care in the world that this lady's breasts are exposed, her legs are exposed, and their, his objective is to subjugate this black woman because she's giving him a hard time because she doesn't want her breasts exposed. Right. Now, um, in, in that clip, you, you made a, a, mm-hmm. a comment where the white guy was sitting there very calmly like it's a normal type thing. And- the white guy sitting at the counter, he's... Now, like most people would have went. Yeah, at least looked around. He's and, probably like, get that nigger, bitch. Mm, get her. Well, here, here's a sad thing. And, and I know you, me and you always get an argument about this. And I always say it starts with the black woman since the black man is absent for whatever reasons. And mm-hmm. that's unacceptable. I've never said that it's acceptable that the father is absent. Um, unless, he, you know, he's dead. Right. Other than that, I don't see any reason why the fathers aren't involved in these children's lives. But. You have these, let's say these girls that are fighting, BT1000, whatever you want to call them. Right. You got young men. Remember when we were in high school, if you guys were fighting, we kind of like break up after a little bit, like, okay, that's enough. And they break no, it up. now it's... Yeah, they just want to put it on, and they don't even bother to intercede. And now you have grown men. I'm very sure at the Waffle I've been to a couple of Waffle House. My, my brother owns significant stock <laughs> in Waffle House. <laughs> if my brother doesn't go to Waffle House, I mean, the fran- half He's the franchise. Well, I hope your brother ain't going to Waffle House now. Yeah, well, I don't know. But uh, half the I'm franchise go him. under. Yeah, call him. But half the franchise goes under if he doesn't show up. <laughs> okay. But I'm very sure there were some black men at that establishment. Police are no damn police. You're, you should stand up. Yeah, this woman's breasts. I just, I just, I... And let this go on the record. I am up defending black women. Go ahead. Let me write this down. Yeah, write that down. But I mean, but so that is so reminiscent of what they did to black women back then. They being mm-hmm. white men, they treated black women in the worst way possible. Right. She was nothing but a piece of meat. And I guarantee you, I'm going to anybody to put some money up right now. If that was a white woman, ain't no way in hell they yeah, would have did that, that white woman that, like that. that. That would not have been acceptable. The two, the two white officers, they weren't very intimidating. Um, I do not see why a uh, these black men that might have been there did not step up well because for one i i understand listen i get it i'm probably going to be murdered i'm going to probably do 10 15 20 maybe life behind protecting this black woman who was sexually assaulted i don't care what nobody says this lady was sexually assaulted so they're going to do a lot of time for protecting her honor just like in slavery okay if somebody drugged your wife she wasn't even your wife then but your woman the mother of your kids they dragged her into the back house and raped her to death. What you what you going to do? Well, I can't do nothing at that particular you point. You ain't going to do nothing but, because they probably drag your ass back there and do the same thing See, to now, you. I'm going to have to speak in my own defense. You know how I am. Okay, you're you going to have to you, kill me. You're talking from the 2018 yeah. Negro. You're going to have to. You're talking from the 18, yeah. 18 Negro. Even if, even if I was an 18, 18, you'd have to kill me. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I mean, ain't going to stand but for I'm, it. Um, I, I, would, I wouldn't doubt that a lot of men lost their lives right. protecting their but, women. But, but also, yeah. in, also in the Waffle House thing, let, 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 let's flip the script mm-hmm. on that. In the Waffle House incident where the black man was the hero. Uh. Isn't that strange? We could protect everybody else but our woman. If we don't get no goddamn respect for the black woman, we don't deserve respect. I agree. My, I, I totally my drop, agree. I'm done. Which is why, and I agree with you, brother. Mm. That's why these white police officers do what they do to us because they're like, what y'all going to do? Right. We gonna do with them. They could have raped that woman right there in the ground. And what we gonna do? Right. And the Waffle House doubled down on it. Says, well, we don't see anything that um from what our um what we understand she was um she deserved what she got. And I'm paraphrasing. That's what the, right. pretty much what they said. She our policy it. says, yeah, she deserved that woman deserved to be degraded in the worst way possible over some fucking silverware. Excuse my French, but She's over some, some plastic silverware. silverware. That black woman deserved what she got. And then you got officers that are touching her without telling her what she is being At arrested all. for. So, I mean, you, you somebody come up to See, you. If that was a white woman, he would have been like, oh, yes, ma'am. Or, well, the, the thing is, uh, the rule says. Right, or they would have been like, this is a civil matter. Yes. Y'all need to take that up amongst yeah. yourself. Yes, uh, 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 Miss Jane. Uh, yeah, this is why we're right. going to arrest you. This is why we're doing that. Black woman. Oh, we don't, we, I got a bad. I don't have to tell I you mean, shit. I mean, for God's sake, she asked for the number for corporate. Right. And so to me, what that said was. Nigga, you don't question me. I said you're paying the silverware charge, and because you're questioning me, you're not only not going to get the number to corporate, you're going to go to jail. Was that a white woman that she was talking about? Was a black woman? 
I'm pretty sure it was a white woman. I don't know for it sure. Sound, it, it, if Al, Al, if you could correct me, uh, this happened in Houston. But even if it, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Even if it wasn't, okay. Once the police got Fair, there, right. did you deem it necessary to do all that to this woman? Yeah. I mean, really? Very sad. Golly. Very sad. What happened to bringing a female officer? Yeah. You know, exactly. you going to manhandle this woman, touch all on this woman but, like that? But, 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 Who but, pulled her shirt up? But, but, but let's talk about all the videos with the Waffle House fights and stuff where you got these women coming after the party or the club and they're fighting all and their booty showing and ass is showing, well, tits again, are showing. But they're, again, they're breaking the place I, up. Also, again, I, you know, I think we need to not stop buying into the narrative that all, and I'm saying that you're saying this, yeah. but all black people do is go to the Waffle House after the club and, 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 and fight. Because to the, your point yeah. about the Waffle House shooting, those people were there having breakfast and some dude came in there and ended their lives. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, we, we got to stop believing the hype that we are all just, you know, the, just bad people, mm-hmm. you know. And but that's the narrative because we don't control the exactly. Media. And then one, one of the, the one of the most disheartening things to me is because I put this video up about the um, woman in uh, mm-hmm. the Waffle House. Yeah, I have quite a few black men that I deleted y'all black asses come on my page and talk about she deserved it. She's a B two one thousand. Yeah, no wonder I no wonder I couldn't loud. communicate with you this morning. Oh, is that, I that blocked yeah, you, you blocked you, me. You, using the alias. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Oh, don't don't come on my page yeah. with that. Yeah. I have a dialogue with you, but the right. minute you start, you know, demonizing black women and talking crazy, well, well, no, no, I'm, I'm not even going to. No, no, I'm not. Me. You shouldn't demonize anybody. Period. But the point is, though, um, demonize somebody in a situation like this that doesn't deserve to be demonized. And I have people right. coming on there telling me what Tommy said. What's some dude named Uncle Hotep? Well, I guess he's yeah, using that he name is. in yeah. parody, mm-hmm. but he talks bad about black women mm-hmm. too. That's what these dudes do, and so. Even I, I, th- I think you, you, you at that point you're just the evil son of a bitch that you would justify that happening. I don't yeah. care what color that woman is, right. that you would justify a woman being treated that way. And if that ever happened to my Afro Thunder, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm but telling I, again, you. that's just there's nothing. We talked about this last uh, on my show. Uh, everything old is new again, or yes. same as yesterday and today. That's what they did to black women during slavery. You have no rights. I'm going to strip you. Tie you up. And this nigga gonna sit there and watch. And, and do sit nothing. there and watch. And we gonna bring that the party all the way to modern day and continue to do the stuff. But you're right, Donna. There's a lot of black men who would risk life and limb and their freedom mm-hmm. to protect that black yeah. woman. Somebody, I mean, out of, I don't know how many men could have been in there, but statistically, right. one of them should have said, bullshit. Right. And got involved. I mean, I, I know for a fact from speaking for myself that I, I would have been involved in it. And you know, the cold part is this quote came from uh, Jim DeRogatis. He is actually the gentleman that's been covering R. Kelly for over mm-hmm. the last 20 right. years, ex- exposing right. him and his nonsense, not the nonsense, but the, uh, the facts, the heinous things that he's been doing to young girls. And do you know, when I read this quote I'm about to give you, and I'm going to paraphrase it, mm-hmm. it sent chills up and down my spine. A white man said, after uh, doing all of his research about uh, R. Kelly, he has discovered that black women are the most devalued people in the world. D, I told you that last year. That's what Tommy was saying. He said the black woman is worth five bucks. Okay, I, I don't and, know and, how and, much, but I'm, and that ain't what just Tommy said. That no, was something out of a study. And, and I know right. that this has been said by you know Malcolm X right. and other people, but this is a white man mm-hmm. after his research, and the reason why he came to that yeah. conclusion is because he's like, I'm giving you yeah. guys, and nobody cares all this evidence, like it's in your face. Yeah. That R. Kelly and nobody's is misusing doing these black girls. Do you know? And nobody cares. Do you know two thirds of uh, people that buy R. Kelly music is black women? Right. Well, there you have it. You know, if we devalue ourselves, but it's just we got to raise the stock and the value on black women well, and black life in general, but really yeah. black women. Well, black life. And what did I say? That's where it all starts. Mm-hmm. You've got to get respect for this black woman first. Everything else is secondary as far as I'm concerned. Because I'll be honest with you, just, you know, on YouTube and even not on YouTube, just because what I do. Right. Instagram. I have a lot of black men that try to uh, subjugate me, mm-hmm. call me names and different stuff because I don't agree with them or I'm mm-hmm. saying something differently than what they believe. Now, uh, we've got people on the... Uh Live feed. Now, on the live feed, I can't reach to read your whole comment. So I would hope that you guys would be short in your comment because I can't read it. But um, my cousin Kai says, I remember watching a television show back in the 
80s, I heard uh, Mr. Duke himself say that the KKK would be reinventing themselves. No longer would they be wearing the white hoods, firemen's attorneys, blue suits. Yeah, they, they just changed their suits and it's Absolutely. doing the same thing. Absolutely. But, um, but you know, and I, that's what Tommy talks about. And a lot of people talk about is this. When you got these young black women, you know, dancing to songs that call themselves bitches and, you know, whores, you got the little kids and everybody's justifying. Well, then you got the men who are also making this music. So it, that, that right, goes right, hand in right, hand. Exactly. But again, I'm not absolving black people of the responsibility mm-hmm. because Lord knows that we are culpable. Yeah. But the people who are giving these people, these artists, these big old mega contracts, mm-hmm. who, who's giving it to right. them? If it's such a horrible thing mm. that black people are dancing to and making right. music that's bad, why do you know white people the um, the white record companies keep giving them these mega million dollar contracts right. to make that stuff? But the two box said, "Dolores Tucker, you a motherfucker." Instead of trying to, you know what I mean? So Al Jackson says, "If you're a black man who de- 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 degenerates, de- de- denigrates." The black woman, consider yourself not being black. I'd have to agree with that. Consider yourself not being a man. Man, period. So, um, so yeah, but, but you know, and that's why everybody keeps talking about me. I'm so hard on black one, whatever. I'm not hard on black. What I'm saying is I'm also hard on the black man because you can't, you've got to, you know, call them to the carpet when you see them. Um, I have nieces. I don't want to see my nieces out there acting right. harsh. Well, in any case, you got to deal with people in love. Right. Sometimes it's tough love. Mm-hmm. Like, if I need to tell you about yourself, I'm not going to say you no good mother yeah. sucker. Yeah, right. You're just rotten. Right. I'm going to say, brother, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to come to you in a way that is pleasing and amiable to you. I'm not going to come in a harsh manner because I, you're not going to listen to me. Well, I've always told you, you want me to do anything? I want your sister delivered <laughs> in chains right here. <laughs> we can be in the star. So anyway, <laughs> um, but no, but, but you know... Uh, that's the whole key. Like I said, the woman is the center. And if we can't get respect for the black woman, and I know people are saying, well, Donovan's always dogging black women. Listen to what I'm saying. All I you're hearing, black yeah, women. all you're hearing is the fringe of what I'm saying. You're not hearing my core message. What I'm saying is, black women, if you want to wear a weave, that's fine. We'll do what you got to do. But I'm saying you're, you're beautiful as you are. Uh, stop spending your money with these people. Stop using excuses. The white women do it. No, no, they don't. You, I, you can't know. do a white women. Do right, it exactly. Stop you know, trying to uh, hold yourself yeah. to the standards of yeah. white women. You know, um, lead. Yeah, right. you're a black woman. Lead. Uh, if you know, if you don't want your son disrespecting women, show him how a woman is supposed to be treated. That's right, and get with a man that's going to stick right. around and also show you how it's show him how it's supposed to be. Right. Treated. You know, don't let your son run around with his pants by his goddamn knees and think that that's cute. It's not cute. Uh, I mean, we talk about all kinds of stuff, you know. And speaking of which, I got a, uh, how much time we got? We got plenty of time. I got another topic. Maybe y'all can help me out. Those of you guys are watching. Okay, so from time to time, uh, I have people asking me questions. Uh, so we're going to do a Ask D&D. Ask D. A- ask D and D segment here. Mm-hmm. So this, this is the scenario, okay? A young man told me that he, uh, his, him and his living girlfriend... By way of her suggestion, have decided to stop having sex because they're not married. Because Bitch, get out! Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> and so she she decided that she came up with this because she said she noticed when they weren't having sex that blessings started to flow her way. Okay. And so from August of last but he's year, but he's miserable. James lived under the same roof and slept in the same bed without having sex because she wants to wait until they get okay, married. Okay. Wait. Okay. I hate to be technical like this. Now, let's define the sex. Are, are we talking penetration sex? Or are we talking oral sex? I mean, no, nothing at all. No, no sex. No con- sexual contact. No, whatsoever. no sex. Okay, gotcha. Maybe spooning. I don't know. but Well, that's not. Yeah. No, sexual contact. Okay. And so he agreed to it. And now he doesn't want to do it anymore. Mm, hold on. The video doesn't come out until I do the editing later. You're, you're seeing the oh. live podcast <laughs> right now. So, yeah, we're, you're going to see the video when it's all... Because. So he agreed to it initially, and now he's like, "Yeah, um, I don't want to do this anymore." Okay. And so he asked me, "What should he do?" Okay. And I said, he, "You now help me out." I said, "You should be true to yourself. Mm-hmm. If you no longer want to wait to have sex with her until you're married," I said, "Have you proposed to her?" He says, "No." I said, "Well, that's going to take a long time." I said, "You need to be true to yourself because what's going to happen is you're going to end up cheating or you're going to bounce anyway." 
Okay. So, and I said also, not to put your lady on, on blast, but I think that's a little bit selfish of her to say, we've been together four years, screwing it. I'm going to cut you it. off, yeah. yeah we got I'm two kids. Well, they ain't got mm-hmm. no kids or nothing. Um, uh, but I, I'm going to, all of a sudden, I don't want to do this anymore until we get married. I, I said, that's selfish because she's saying, me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I. She hasn't considered you. And then when she's going to be all upset when you go and find some somebody else that's going to do it. Right. And, um, and so I told him, I said, just keep it real with her. Listen, I, it sounded good at the time, but now it don't sound good. I want to have sex. And if she tells you no, then you need to make a decision yeah. that's right for you. Absolutely. 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 So, um, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Chris, uh, when the editing and video done and we put the video in right now, you're just seeing the live feed us and just, that's why you see all the green and stuff. Cause if I had my way, you wouldn't see any of this. Okay. Uh, Jones, yeah. Oh, okay. Tell me to go on my page. And uh, I put the video up yesterday, I think. Yeah. Yeah. She put the video uh, up yesterday on her page. So just check, check that yeah. out. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can't, you know, give somebody something and then take it away because you know, you've already got them. Yeah, and now it's, that, that that's not about y'all. That's about me. Right. Well, I feel like we don't need to do this anymore. Yeah. Until we, and I said, she's also manipulating you, too, Well, we, yeah. until we get married. Right. And so he was, I guess, even at the point where he's like, well, shit, I just want to go down to City Hall. But he's like, I don't want to do that right now. Right. I, but I feel like if that's that's the only way I'm going to get it, I'm like, right. see, like the gangster me wanted to tell him, listen, she ain't the only fish in the sea. Exactly. Exactly. You got to do what you, you know, got to do sometimes. I mean, got no kids. You're not married. Right. You don't have no, you but, know, you know, house. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell them from the, let, let, let me pull from the player book. Uh-oh. Is that the book of Ike? The book of Ike. <laughs> Brother, do what you got to do as long as she don't find out. However, Ooh. however, if she does find out, she has no course to get mad because she puts you in that situation to do such. Well, I digress, Ike. Okay. He he put himself in that situation because he agreed to it. Okay, he that's right. He should have never I, I agreed that. to it. But mm-hmm. now that he doesn't want to agree, uh, uh, yeah, go along it. with the agreement, he should just tell sure. her. Tell her straight up. Not getting none. I mean, yeah. you. I'm sleeping in the same bed with you every night. Rock hard. And I, right, I can't wait until and I don't. I ain't even proposed to you, so I'm the when we're getting married because you're getting all these blessings. Right, and see, you know, and and, and everybody's got to really think about this too. If you're gonna. Be, if you're going to be acting like you're married, just get married. She's she's manipulating him. Is yeah. What is. I mean, you know, at this point, if you know, and that's what I'm saying, you ladies, when you give us everything like that, you throw it out there like that. You're not wifey material. But check it out, though. You're not wifey. The material. other part I didn't think about and didn't mm-hmm. mention to him is maybe she getting it from somebody else. Mm, that could be something, too. Maybe she got now, maybe she got a, a now, little supply now, somewhere. Now I can say this honestly. I'd say seventy percent of women, when it comes to relationships, are fair, fairly loyal. It's mostly the guy that's fucking. Up. I have a lot of dudes that be like, "You a lie." Yeah, well, <laughs> well, well, but then you got you got to look at the caliber of women yeah. he deals with. So. I agree, but so yeah, so, that's what uh, I told the brother. Yeah, you know, so she, but I'm just saying that this is why you shouldn't put yourself in that kind of situation. You just can't turn the spigot off. One, I mean, I have I had friends that were saying they had three kids with the dude. They finally decide to get married, and she wants to wait. The marriage takes two years. I'm like, you already have three kids. What are we waiting on? Yeah, what, what, what are you waiting on? And then people use that, well, if you love me, you would wait. I love you, but I love me too. I'm out. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. I would have never agreed to nothing like right. that. Like you. Right, right. Well, we know your situation. Too. <laughs> we know it. I'm hard. already agreeing to it. <laughs> yeah. <like>, oh, yeah. <laughs> you already living in sin. <laughs> so, uh, hey, uh, this has been To The Hard Way. Uh, Donovan Sadiq, D... Demetra K. You can check her videos out on YouTube. Just look up Demetra K. She's also live 3 p.m. on Sundays, Facebook Live, Demetra K. You guys check her out. We continue some of these topics on the on yep. that show as well. So you guys got something to say. Uh, she answers all the questions while we're doing it. Again, for those guys, thank you guys for tuning in. This is the live feed. That's why you're seeing all this. We're encapsulated in a green box, basically. You're going to see all the bells and whistles after we do the editing. I um, want to also tell you guys, uh, we... Uh, the political season is ramping up really, really, really quick. So you're going to get a lot of different news and things. And and if you're, I got to say this, this is me without D. So she's, uh, yeah, you want to kind of scoot over. If you don't like what you see and what you hear here, you have a lot of choices out there. And we really don't give a damn if you like what you see or what you hear here. Because if it's the truth, it's the truth. Well, that wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad. I thought you were going to say something like kiss my ass or something. No, I I say that as I'm ending. Oh. Yeah.
you know, Tommy Sundermeyer, fuck you and good night. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one like that. So, but no, uh, and that, that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to promote um, conversation and talking among our people and people, well, we're all people. No, that ain't what we're here to do. That is not what we're here to do. Okay. So let's just be honest. We are here. To, we got to take care of home before we worry about everybody else. So that's what just we're like here to do. Everybody else do. Yeah, everybody else do. So check us out. Check the out at, at 3 p.m. And again, we're here every Tuesday, just about. Uh, I will be doing a live feed. On my assignment overseas coming up fairly, fairly soon. Well, we so you can't guys wait to see. Right. So we'll check you guys out.